President Trump can do so much better of a job than President Biden has done. I mean, we, you know, if you look at the chaos, if you look at the at the southern border, if you look at the economy and, and people are struggling, I know in my district when I'm going home, those are the two things that they're yeah. asking me to mind about. They're asking me about the economy and they're asking me about that border. They want to see real change. We're not seeing change here with the Biden administration. We need President Trump but back Congressman. in office. Let's talk about the southern border, because do you know, not, as a member of the House, have right now an opportunity to actually do something about it, to see changes to asylum and parole realized for changes that we have seen hard to find in decades now essentially presented to you? And the House says that they don't want it. Can you help explain that thinking? Well, first of all, that bill, as you so accurately have said, is dead on arrival. And there's a good reason for it. Look, we sent them H.R. 2. H.R. 2 is a great bill that addresses the situation. But let's keep in mind that this president has the authority to, to take care of what's going on at the border. This is something he created, and he is not taking care of it by executive action. If he were to put back the Remain in Mexico policy, if he were to complete the construction of the wall, all of these things that he can do, he can correct this without us having to do anything here in Congress. Now, yeah, we'd like to see some of these issues resolved that have been ongoing. And that is something that we're going to be working on, but not with this current bill. Let me ask you, how many laws do we have on the book where after a certain number of people violate that law, then we're going to start prosecuting people? That makes no sense whatsoever. Well, you just said a lot there, uh, Congressman, and I'm just I'm, I'm sort of curious by this change in politics, as Mitch McConnell himself put it, since Iowa, because it does seem that Donald Trump's frontrunner status now has changed the mood music here in Washington, D.C. Some would suggest this bill actually could have passed uh, with Republican support if it had happened toward the end of last year. But you're going to need Democrats for anything that that passes Congress, right? I realize you'd like to see the president act, but if there's a legislative answer to this, it's going to have to involve Democrats and therefore some level of compromise, no? Obviously, with the tight uh, majority that we have in the House, with the fact that the Senate is under Democratic majority and we have a Democrat in the White House, yes, it's going to take bipartisan work. And, and look, I'm not opposed to that. I check my record. You'll see that I've legislated and governed in a bipartisan fashion. I know how to do that, and I'm willing to do that. However, this bill that they are sending over, this border bill, is not what my constituents want. It's not what's going to be best for this country. Can you just help explain, though, how not having anything whatsoever, no changes, is better than the current status quo? When you talk about how for your constituents, the border is so is so top of mind. Why is just some change, even if not perfect, the worst alternative to doing nothing? Because of the other things that it does as well. And, you know, and listen, I would beg to differ that uh, you got to do something. Well, and, you know, if we could cause more harm, and I believe that this border bill would cause more harm if we were to enact it, then it would do us good. You know, I'm, I'm a healthcare professional, and, and as a consultant mm. in nursing homes, I was always asked a question, asking the question, does the benefit outweigh the risk? And in this case, I don't think the benefit outweighs the risk of all the other things that this brings in with it. Mm. To what extent, Congressman, is Donald Trump running the House right now. This seemed to be a Republican priority until he told the Speaker that it was DOA. No, it, it, that, that doesn't have anything to do with it. I represent my constituents. I vote according to what my constituents feel and the way that I'm representing them, as I hope every other member of Congress does. So to think mm -hmm. that, oh, this is the heavy mm -hmm. hand of Donald Trump, I think is erroneous. Well, as we've discussed, Congressman, you may not even have a chance to vote either way on this package if it is indeed dead on arrival in the House and never will make it to the floor. But you may have a chance today to vote as to whether or not to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Your colleague, Congressman McClintock, today said that he is a no vote on that. And his reasoning he put in a memo today, he said the problem is that they failed to identify an impeachable crime that Mayorkas committed. He says this is a stretch and distortion of the Constitution in order to hold the administration accountable for what he says is stretching and distorting the law. Congressman, from your perspective, what high crimes or misdemeanors has the Homeland Security committed? 
Look, Mayorkas needs to go, and I'm surprised he's lasted this long. It's bad enough the number of illegal immigrants who are coming across that border. But in my opinion, that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is the drugs coming across that border, the fentanyl coming across that border, killing our citizens. 200 people every day in this country dying as a result of fentanyl poisoning. That, to me, is the reason why he should be impeached. That, to me, is why I'm going to vote to impeach him. He should be ashamed. And he should resign without us having to impeach him. Is that because of Alejandro Mayorkas, though, or Joe Biden, Congressman? I think that's the question people have. He's, his job is to carry out the policy of the president, right? Well, and, and, you know, we're very fortunate in the House to have a constitutional lawyer as our speaker. And, and, and look, our lawyers have looked over this and they've studied this and they have advised us that our constitution gives the secretary in this situation authority to to make changes here if he's listening to joe biden then joe biden should go down with him but i'm telling you Marcus has got to go if it's bad enough with the number of illegal immigrants that are coming across that border but the drugs that are infesting every community in america killing 200 people every day if we had a plane crashing that killed 200 people we'd stop every airplane that was flying in this country until we figured out what was going wrong yet we lose 200 people every day to fentanyl poisoning and we do nothing or this administration does nothing 